Good morning. Welcome to TriStar Digging. I appreciate you joining us today. We've got a small little job to take care of. Not too far from the house. I'm actually going to track the machine down there and take care of it. Small brush cutting job that I do a couple times a year. And uh, we're going to take the uh, Cat 259D skid steer. And uh, I'm going to get this thing started up, let it be warming up. And then i got to go find the brush cutter. And make sure that the fittings on it for the hydraulics are there. Because I've been robbing those fittings off to make them fit for the, the goat, the forestry melcher so let's get this thing fired up and uh let's get this day started it's been raining here for days and days and days gosh can't get any work done but i did get the dozer cleaned up and got the excavator cleaned up I even got the inside of the dozer cleaned up. Take a look at this. Isn't that pretty and clean? Got all that cleaned up. It's ready to go get dirty again. I even washed all the glass in it. And I cleaned the uh, excavator up good too. It was a mess, but I got that thing cleaned up nice now. I didn't clean up the 304. It wasn't too bad. Um, other than the glass, I need the glass cleaned in it. But let's go find that brush cutter. All right, I see the brush cutter sitting there. I'm hoping it's got uh, hydraulic fittings on it. Let's see here. Nope, missing one. Nothing right there. All right, it's time to rob. I gotta rob one off of something else. And that's an O-ring style. So uh, let's see what I can find. I think we might be in business. That one right there is a female fitting what we need. And that uh, appears to be a O-ring style. As long as the thread size is the same, we'll be in good shape right there. Now, if that don't leak, we are in business. I think the skid steer's warming up a little bit there, so we'll go get it and get hooked up and get this thing a try, see if it's gonna work for us this morning. I guess I need to buy a few of those fittings. Uh, I just robbed that one off the trencher and I've already robbed one off the Harley rake, power rake to uh, put on the goat. So I guess it's time to buy some. that hooked up we'll see if it's gonna spin around good but while I'm thinking about it I've got to do some undercarriage work on this cat skid steer just want to ask you folks where the best place is to uh, get undercarriage parts for say the skid steer I've heard of different ones that youtubers have talked about Friday parts I think it's one of them I think dirt boss talks about that one truck and track and uh, seems like there's another one or two that I've heard of and I check with cat too as well and see what the price is Basically what I'm needing is uh, the four bottom rollers, or these right here. So there's four of these bottom rollers, one, two, three, four, and then this back sprocket, which is completely wore out. You can tell the gap distance there. That's actually supposed to be about right here, but that's how much is worn off of that. So I need a back sprocket, the four rollers on the bottom, this front idler, and then I need the back idler as well, and then tracks, obviously. So I just did a quick parts look up last night on uh, catparts.com, I think it's the name of that one. I was looking around eight, nine thousand dollars for all those parts. So it pays to shop around for that. But the thing about it is, I wanna buy some good quality parts. I don't wanna buy cheap knockoff stuff. It just, it's just gonna cause problems. So good quality parts is what I'm looking for. That machine's got 3,000 hours on it. This is the first time I've done any kind of undercarriage work other than replacing tracks. So I feel like I've got good use out of the undercarriage and all of it's not worn out. The back sprocket's definitely worn out. The front idler on the other side is roaring. You might even hear that today. Uh, the, the bearings are completely shot in that. 
so it's roaring at me and uh but while i'm in there i'm just gonna replace everything three thousand hours on it if i get another three thousand hours on new stuff so i'll be good let's see if this thing's gonna spin up and uh let's go get some work done <laughs> To the property here and i mow this thing with me like mentioned a couple times a year and uh goes over to those little little hardwood looking trees and all this grown up area here and back up this little creek ditch this is where my mom lives and uh this kind of gets grown up and she likes this kept neat and clean and so uh we'll work on that she also told me about a, a bucket of oil that was down here in the in the uh, field i guess this rolled off the back of somebody's truck let's take a look at that Yep, that is exactly what's happened. Somebody's come around that curve and that thing's rolled off. It rolled right down here, so uh, that's a good find.
problem here. And uh, I've never had this happen before on this mower. But this log that I was chewing up right there, there's two pieces of it, one right there and one right here. And they've got wedged against the side and against the disc here. So I gotta get that cleared out. This little lot right here is uh, kind of hard to mow. There's a lot of trees, a lot of stuff to watch out for. It's steep in places, but uh, it cleans up pretty good. And got a creek going through the middle of it, so that's even more interesting. And here is a view from her house now. All that was grown up a little while ago. I guess I should have come over here and did a before shot of this, but uh, all that was all grown up. But anyway, it's good and clean now and looks pretty good. Let's take her a look around now and see if I missed anything. This is where I started a while ago, going down through here. And it looks pretty good. I used to mow this with a tractor and a bush hog. Gosh, I've been mowing it since I was probably 10 years old, I guess. Uh, my papa and granny used to live there. But uh, I always had trouble getting the banks cleaned up. And so now then with this machine, I've been mowing it with this for several years now. I can get down into the creek. That's what I like about that skid steer attachment too, is you can get down in those areas and trim those 
little privet bush just as well. But that's got it looking pretty good. There's that stick I had wedged underneath a while ago, but uh, that's a look at it. And she's got some of her little trees and stuff marked with red flags. <laughs> I hope I saw all those little red flags and didn't chop down any of her trees. But anyway, that looks pretty good. I appreciate you watching. I'm gonna go up here and uh, see if I can get paid. Uh, I'd like to have something to eat. Maybe I can find something to eat there while I'm there. Anyway, God bless you. I appreciate you watching. Stick around for the message. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that video there, that brush cut job on the creek bank. Uh, that was a good little job to do and got that cleaned up, looking real nice. And and uh, like I said, I mow that a couple times a year. And, and uh, so it doesn't take a whole lot to keep it in good shape, but uh, it does need to be done. So today in the message, I want to talk about the word redemption. You know, the, the word redemption is spoken about in the Bible, and you've heard that if you go to church or been to church. You've heard that word redemption. And what does that word actually mean? So we wanna look at that today and then see how the word redemption applies to your life and to my life. So I first wanna look in what the dictionary uh, would say about the word redemption. And the dictionary would say, compensate for faults or bad aspects of something. I think the Bible would agree mostly with that in that uh, the word redemption would be to buy something back, to pay the ransom, to pay the price for something. So the word redemption will come up in the Bible several times, and one of the times I want to look at is in Romans chapter 3, 23 and 24. And it says, For all have sinned, that's important. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So I, first I want to take a look at that, and it says, For all have sinned. So we all have a sin debt to pay. We all are sinners, including myself and anyone that's ever breathed air on this earth, owes a debt for sin against God. So this is very clear that we've all sinned and we fall short of the glory of God. Romans chapter three, verse 10 would say this, there is none righteous, no, not one. Although there are some in the world today would claim that they don't have any sin or their sins are small, regardless, small or big, the sin debt has to be paid. So the word would go on there in verse 24 saying, being justified freely by his grace being justified, being set free, being justified by what? His grace, not of works. It's talking about grace. Grace means the unmerited favor of God. So it says that we're justified freely by His grace through what? Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The redemption, the setting free, paying the price, paying the ransom, paying that sin debt is what that's talking about. And that being in Christ Jesus. Not in self-confidence, not in selfishness or self-righteousness, but in Christ Jesus is what the word is talking about there. On a website that I look at from time to time, gotquestions.org, it would say this. The word redeemed means to buy out. The term was used of a slave's freedom. The application of this term to Christ's death on the cross is quite telling. If we are redeemed, being believers in Jesus Christ, having our debt paid, then our prior condition was that of slavery. The Bible is clear. We are slaves of sin. In ourselves and in and of ourselves, we are slaves to sin. So we, so we owe that debt. And it says God has purchased our freedom and we are no longer in bondage to sin. So when, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you've been set free of that sin debt, the sin debt's been paid, then you're no longer held in bondage to that sin. That's so important that we know and understand there's a lot of people in this world, they don't want to go to church, they don't want to have religion because they're having fun and they're enjoying their life, they're enjoying themselves. Listen, when you realize who Jesus Christ truly is, all that stuff, well, you'll forget about that stuff. That stuff will have no longer a hold on you. Yes, there's cravings, desires in my life for sin and things in my life that, 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 I, that, 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 that draw me to them. And yes, sometimes I fall to them, but, but the bondage of that is not there. God has given me the freedom to walk away from those things. And listen, I've done a lot of things in my life I'm not proud of. But I can look back on those things now and know that I'm forgiven of those things. That those things have no longer a hold on me. So I want to finish with this in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. It says this, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into his kingdom of the Son of his love. Verse 14, In whom we have redemption. The payment has been paid. In whom we have redemption through what? Glad you asked. It's through his blood. 
It's through his blood, through the sacrifice, that we have the forgiveness of sins. And I want to read that again. It says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. So that's what redemption is about. We could spend a long time on this, but I hope within this four or five minutes of this message, I hope that I've conveyed the, the truth of the word redemption and how important that is in your life. I hope that you know him. I hope that you are redeemed today. I hope that your sin debt has been paid. But listen, friend, don't die in your sins. Don't die owing that sin debt. The cost is too high. But the promise is the price has been paid. Jesus has already paid the ransom, the price for your sins. If you'll just receive it, have you been redeemed?